Hey guys, and welcome back to Urban Strike. We last left off, we uh, destroyed Malone's casino. Now, let's go finish him off, shall we? This mission, well, <laughs> what an anticlimactic mission is this one. And notice how we left the casino on foot, and we are now underground in some underground mountain secret lab how is our mohican helicopter here should we not be asking questions possibly anyway equipment is in very short supply here fuel and ammo uh, and armor for that matter however you we, we we really don't need much it's not a very complicatedly long mission so, clear enemy weapons. Clear the area of enemy weaponry to make your assault easier. Look for fixed AA weapons and mobile tank weapons currently on the move. Yep. And there is a few of them, but that's okay. That's what we're here for. There are lots and lots of AA guns here, but there's also a lot of troops as well. Uh, I'm assuming he's gone to great expense carpeting this area. Because it looks like a massive indoor showroom. Uh, evil McEvil Lair that's about 700 miles long. Interesting choice. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to judge. I'm not uh, an evil genius myself. Not yet, anyway. Life hasn't been that savage just yet. Uh, give it time. Anyway, we have a land shark here. This land shark is important because he has some of our precious few supplies on board. Notice how we're destroying a lot of AA equipment. That's kind of bad because uh, that means we're leaving most of the land sharks. There's one. He's done. He's had enough. Now, uh, as we destroy these, more will spawn in. So we do need to be a little bit careful. Look at these. Most of these enemies as well. I don't know if you noticed that there, but they do their best to shoot themselves in the in the foot. Uh, it's really funny, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, dear. I was going to say, oh, yeah. What do you want, sunshine? As I swing my helicopter around to waste his ass. And I hear click. <laughs> not good. That is not a happy sound. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I am going to want to destroy all of the equipment, to be honest. Because uh, we don't really want to be running into enemy guns later on. It's not great, to be honest. Oh, God. Okay, no, we're not out of ammo. It's just the game is lagging up so much. Um, <laughs> my, well, the emulator is having a hard time processing all of this. Now, uh, oh, hello. Yeah, so we've got you. We're going to turn up. This guy turns up, I think, at the end of the mission. So this is going to be delicate. Oh, he's gone. He should have more supplies on him. He does. Good man. Good man, that man. Right, let's go grab some ammo. Yeah, uh, this isn't actually like the computer lagging up. It's the emulator lagging up. This emulator is so good. It emulates the limits of the system as well, which uh, I believe there are some um, other emulators out there, like the PlayStation 1 emulator that is so good now can actually smooth out the frame rate which is interesting I mean you know there is an argument there that that's not accurate emulation but hey it would be nice if this emulator also did the same thing I've noticed I haven't taken the filtering filter off either which is why it looks a little bit gross but hey it's fine I can't remember the shortcut for that right land shark is dusted oh we are seriously out of uh, health here. Shit. Right, well, luckily. Now, this is all the equipment we actually have on this mission. That's it, boyos. Blow up the enemy barracks. Neutralize the enemy troops by blowing up the barracks. Well, I mean, that's self-explanatory. I'm sure we can handle that. Yep, there is such a shortage of gear. And we're still in a danger zone, apparently. I mean, I don't think we actually are, but hey, if you say so, game. These barracks are weird, man. They look like they've got the English flag on top. Maybe uh, English uh, are on Malone's side. I don't know. It's possible. Uh, a lot of his casino grunts did look like 007, so who knows? 
Right, well that's mission two done. Gee, that was tough. Central control is next. Take out central control. Blow away the laser control center. Clear the area of enemy weapons and take out the banks of controls before another blast can be fired. Aye. Aye, let's waste him. So we don't have to deal with him later. Again, this mission is so quick and easy. It's, it's bizarre. It's almost like they just gave up. They had this attitude like, yeah, well, you know, if you're going to get this far, then you might as well just, uh, you know, ride out the rest of the game. Run out the clock of something easy. I don't know why my missile's fired there. Now, I do like this fact, actually. If we destroy the computer that's attached to the monitor, the monitor goes blank, which is uh, <laughs> an interesting little bit of detail there. Uh, shame about the scientists, man. We can't actually do anything with those. Can't pick them up or save them or anything. Get extra armor, which actually kind of might have been a good idea on this mission, to be honest. Right, well, we're just going to continue destroying everything. Ooh, we're bingo fuel. Um, there is also land sharks that will appear. Little sneaky sons of bitches that just decide to appear for no reason. Uh, which is annoying. I don't know where they come from. Oh, shit. To be honest. I mean, you can pretty much see... Oh, God, look how much wasted space we're right in the corner of the map this map is tiny yeah uh, i don't know why they did that so make the game seem more impressively large but why though i don't know all right well let's continue i mean that 4h 1984 is probably some kind of code um actually I wonder if that's a level code, thinking about it. Uh, my... Oh, God. I know where my missiles are going off. There we go. So for some reason, my control pad was on auto-fire. Should not have been on auto-fire. Auto-fire is bad, bruh. Oh, they were playing knots and crosses on that. I believe the Americans call that uh, tic-tac-toe. I think. Could be wrong. In fact, I'm sure you American guys call that tic-tac-toe. Right. Uh, we've got these weird... Solar panels, I guess. I don't know what half of this equipment is. All we know is we're wasting a lot. I imagine it's quite expensive. So, I mean, motherfucker needed a casino to afford this shit. Right, what are we looking at now? Laser control. Is laser control? No, laser housing is done. So mission three and four are like the same. And then we have destroy the laser housing. Uh, blast open the steel reinforced room that houses the secret laser weapon. Yeah, this is pretty easy. In fact, I think there's a land shark around here somewhere that does wake up. There he is. Yeah, get fucked. Wow, he took some hits, man. Uh, and then, oh, we need some ammo. Malone's quarters standing. Destroy Malone's quarters. Knock a hole in Malone's fortified private ready room. It is heavily defended outside and Malone may have armed bodyguards inside with him. Yeah, he may do. Uh, spoiler, he doesn't, I don't think. <laughs> He's just on his own. This Would you believe this mission's like almost over? Um, Yeah, I'm not kidding. I mean, that that's it, really. It's such an anticlimactic mission and... I would go as far as saying it's the easiest mission in any of the strike games. Um, we do have the 3D strike games coming up. Uh, but they are uh, significantly harder. And you can see there's a turret there from... Oh god, right, we've destroyed that. There is a turret there from one of those annoying guns. Right, let's go. Oh god, grab him. Right. Oof. You may have won this battle, but I intend to win the war. Explosively! Yeah, I'm not sure why they show us over the laser weapon there. And um, significantly above the laser weapon there, as we are not. But hey man, whatever you say. We have 27 seconds to fly our ass over. Oh, I should actually read the mission. Capture Malone. Laser weapon damaged. Capture Malone. Capture Malone as he tries to make a break from his command post. Pick him up with your skyhook. He must not be allowed to escape. Yeah, we grabbed him with the skyhook. Uh, and he's just like vibrating away. I'm sure he's enjoying the wind. Oh, fuck me. Hello. I have to remember where he is. Go waste his ass in a minute. Uh, we've got 11 seconds left. 
Right, good night, Malone. And then we see a very bizarre image there of Malone tumbling to his death uh, with the bomb clearly strapped to him, but the laser weapon is already exploding. You know, sometimes it's best not to question and, and think about these things, you know. But hey, that's that. Mission freaking done, son. That is this game finished. Uh, I'm going to pause it one second. I'm going to bring up my uh, capture software because I'm curious to see how long this actually took. Okay, so this mission took 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So what I'm probably going to do is I will have this... Oh, God, armor. I want to go back and grab some more armor just because... Just because I have a feeling that there's one more land shark right by our base. What do we have left in stock? We've got ammo, but hey, that's fine. We don't need your stinking ammo. Yep. Well, there's him there. Really? Damn, bro. The hell is your one made out of? An obtainium or some bullshit, I don't know. Yeah, I might put Yeah, that no 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 that was the land shark that I was thinking of. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh I'm thinking about doing some more Mega Drive games. Uh I've got to practice them because a lot of them I haven't played for many, many, many moons. But we we'll see. We'll see. It depends on time and all that. But there is a few that I do want to do. Anyway, guys, let's touch down. <laughs> that was it. 11 minutes. Bazooka destroyed. Let's enjoy the ending. Uh, very, very anticlimactic. I mean, that mission... Uh, they could have done a lot more with it, to be honest. It would have been nice to actually assault a proper fortress, but hey. Also, I find this uh, end screen here... Um, not quite as interesting for some reason. It's not as visually interesting as the other ones were. Um, Desert Strike had quite a lot of tongue-in-cheek kind of uh, stuff in the ending. And uh, so did Jungle Strike for that matter. Whereas this one, they just chuck up a, a, a scene of, uh, I don't know, Hawaii, I guess. Because that's where we were in the beginning of the game. And a phone with a message flashing, but I guess nobody gives much of a fuck because they're all down on the beach drinking um, martinis or whatever the hell, some kind of cocktail, I suppose. Does this game still hold up, though? Does it hold up? Because the others do. What about this one? Um, yeah, I would say this game still holds up. It's still a strike game. It definitely feels like the weakest... Uh, which is interesting because because from what I've been thinking about this recently, I'm pretty sure as a kid, um, I really loved this game. I loved this game to bits. And I kind of remember playing this one an awful lot. Um, but honestly, I, th I, think, I think Desert Strike to a degree is always going to be my favorite one. Just for the pure nostalgic reasons. Um, I I think, if we have to be honest here, I think Jungle Strike is the best. It has the difficulty, it has a nice variety, and uh, I think the production values were, were, were better, especially with the ending. Um, this one had the better intro. This game started off a lot stronger. But it kind of got a little bit lazy towards the end. Uh, the on-foot missions as well uh, were not, they're not great, to be honest. It, it would have been better if we had some more vehicles, like in Jungle Strike. In Jungle Strike, we had a huge variety of vehicles, uh, whereas in this game, there was a few. I mean, you had the Black Hawk, which they didn't really use a lot of, actually, considering how many missions uh, in this game revolved around saving a hell of a lot of people. It would have been nice. To see them uh, give us some more uh, Black Hawk action. Also the Mohican. I mean, it's cool. Uh, it's nice that they came up with their own design. But yeah, I preferred the Comanche and the Apache. And obviously, 
after this, we went on to the 3D Strike games. Now, the 3D ones, or the 32-bit ones, I should say, really. Wow. Uh, that's that's where the series really changed. Um, they seem to have knocked up the comedy quite a bit in the 3D series. And the difficulty. Oh, man, the difficulty. The missions are so much longer in the... Uh, 3D strike games and they're so 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 much harder as well they're savage I mean there are plenty of missions that I can think of where the game doesn't piss around with giving you a very strict time limit towards the end of the mission and then that's it just click your fingers game over just yeah restart mission and when you have limited time to record it's savage uh, we will be getting to those we definitely will be getting to those uh, probably fairly soon I guess uh, but what I did like about uh, you decide how do we decide by buying the game I suppose I suppose the 3d strike games they did hang on one second I'm gonna mute yeah, so they did uh, change the formula up loads. They went really heavy into the FMV. And because, you know, CD-based system, they got 700 of megabytes to fill up now. Was it 650 when CDs first came out? I think, I think it was 650, 700, something like that. And uh, obviously the basic 3D graphics didn't really fill up a lot of space. So they started filling the discs up with FMV. And a lot of games, well, it, they were quite bad. Um, the FMV was pretty rough, but the strike games really excelled with it. And they had a really cool atmosphere, very cool atmosphere, especially Soviet Strike. That is one of my favorite PlayStation games of all time. Do they hold up? From what I can remember, though, they do not hold up as well as these. They're still playable, but they're hard. Um, this, to me, this... These will always be the Strike games. This Strike trilogy, the 16-bit trilogy, is kind of where it's at because anyone can pick these up and play them. The 3D ones, they are very, very rough. And if you didn't play, like if you didn't play these games back in the day, anyone can pick these up and play them and enjoy them. And once you learn them, it's okay. The 3D games are very rough. Uh, they came out, Soviet Strike actually came out on the Sega Saturn as well. And the Sega Saturn version was much superior to the PlayStation version. Uh, it had over eight, I think I read, I can't remember if it was over 1,000 or over 8,000 bug fixes on the Sega Saturn version. Uh, visually, they're pretty much the same. Uh, there's a few differences, but not not too much. Um, but and then you've got the two different controllers as well. I don't have a Sega Saturn, sadly. I really wish that I could get one at some point, but they're, they're insanely expensive. Um, they really are. Uh, but I th obviously, we'll do the PlayStation versions because that's what I've got, and I can run them through my PlayStation 3 as well. So, yes, what an interesting series! And this series was hugely popular as well, it was massive. It was everybody played the strike games. Uh, maybe not so much on the PlayStation. Um, I mean, they were they were fairly well known, but not like these. Everyone that had a Mega Drive that I knew and knew of had played the strike games. And judging by how popular these games have been on YouTube, um, everyone fully remembers them. So why we never got a re-release of these, I I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I would pay. Uh, 10 quid for a HD remaster of the trilogy or maybe even 20 quid if they did a good job of it with achievements and trophies and all that good shit um, and even maybe the 3D games as well uh, there have been other attempts as of late to recreate games like this there was one on the original Xbox that I kind of remember I can't remember what it was called but I always wanted to play it I played the demo and it was not bad really not bad uh it had a slightly different um perspective than the 3d games uh, i will try and find that game actually and do it at some point but uh yeah i'm gonna leave it there anyway guys because i can waffle on about these games forever 
Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, guys, until next time.